Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Women in Leadership Talk podcast. We are excited to have you here today. We've got a great conversation planned, and I must admit, Sabine and I have already been talking a little bit, so we hate that you missed that first part. So I'd like to welcome Sabine Gideon. Sabine, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Vicki. Vicki, I'm so excited to be here. Well, we're thrilled to have you here, and I want to take a moment and thank our audience. I know you have an option as to what podcast you listen to, and I'm super grateful that you keep chiming in to the Will Talk podcast. It's important to us um, to really get messages out, you know, that help our audiences, you know, even if it's one thing you leave here with today, uh, we'd love to hear what that is. And, you know, just sharing other people's experiences and knowledge with you is our way of giving back. So we're going to jump in and I'm going to give you a little bit of background on Sabine before we get into the actual conversation. So Sabine is the founder and CEO of Gideon Enterprises, which is where she is a leadership and executive coach. She has served as a business partner and leadership strategist for over 15 years. She has helped impact driven leaders upscale their leadership capabilities so that they can actually cultivate organizations and teams that support their business strategy and their growth objectives. Now, this is pretty amazing, Sabine. You've navigated frontline HR leadership within a 70 billion Fortune 50 conglomerate. Like that's that's pretty massive. <laughs> so we'll, we'll get into a little bit of that later, but she's also launched the She Leads Network in 2021. Um, and so, you know, all these things we're gonna we're gonna spend some time talking about, but I think the the piece that really interested me in having this conversation is the book that you wrote a couple of years ago about being transformed and that journey of becoming. And so we're really excited to hear about that. And let's make sure before our conversation's over today that you share with the audience where they can actually find your book. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Awesome. So are you ready to get into this and start having a conversation? Absolutely. I'm excited. I am okay, excited. good. Me too. Me too. And so, you know, let's start with who is Sabine? Oh, I really I want to hear that. that. <laughs> yeah, I love that question. And um, I will answer it. And and the reason why I love that question so much is I, as I've shared with others and, you know, many of my clients know, like, that's usually the question that I, I support them in getting down to the root to. Mm -hmm. um, because oftentimes when I've asked uh, people that question, whether they're clients or, you know, people in my circle, you know, you start with all of the identities, right? You start with, well, I'm a coach, I'm this, I'm that, I'm a mom, I'm, you know, a sister, I'm all these things. And my goal is to get people to the heart of who are you? And oftentimes that question is very uncomfortable for people sure. to answer because we've identified with so many of the roles that we play, the titles that we have in our, our work environments, in our communities. And what I've learned over the last few years and asking people that question is that it elicits two things, right? It either gets them to the place where they realize that they don't know the answer to that question. When you've stripped away all of the roles, all the identities, all of the titles, a lot of people unfortunately don't know how to answer that question, which is a good thing, right? Because then there's a starting ground. And then for those who do know the answer to that question, it helps them to then look at what they've created around them in their lives and their businesses and everything else to really uncover am, is who I am or who I am being aligned with, you know, the things that I've created around me right. or the things that I've created to support me and do they still serve who I am? Um, so thank you so much for, for asking that yeah. question. <laughs> and so I am, if I, if I'm being completely honest, I am on a journey to discovering the answer, the full answer to that question, um, without all of the identities, without all the roles, without all the titles. Um, what I have come to so far is that I am a messenger, um, meaning that I am a messenger of someone who encourages someone who reflects back to others, the truth mm -hmm. of who they are, the greatness that is within them. Um, I believe that I am someone who is loving and caring and my, my, um, my gift to the world, if you will, in, in terms of who I am being is someone who reflects back to themselves or reflects back to others the greatness that's within, whether you call that God, whether you call that light, whether you call that universe, whatever that is, um, I am the reflection of um, who he is or whatever you want to call it back to others. 
Beautiful. Wow. I love that. And you said so many things there that I can't help, but we just have to dig into a little bit because that identity piece that you, you described, that is, I would describe that as it's almost a crutch for us. Right. Um, And, and oftentimes we don't even realize that until, until that question is asked, Mm -hmm. who are you? Right. So I'm just curious to being like, what do you what do you see the barriers to be for people when it comes to that identity holding on to or that identity crisis that we might have? Yeah, so many things. I mean, I think about my my journey and, you know, uh, the the book that I wrote, like it's almost like it, it gave my journey up to one part of my life. Right. And so this journey of self-discovery, if you want to call it, or transformation has been 16 years in the making. Um, And the thing that the catalyst for that was at 25, I hit rock bottom. And for me, rock bottom was, I don't want to be here anymore. Um, And so I planned what my last day was going to look like and and down to the T. And I had this moment in which um, on the last day or the day before, I decided to have a conversation with God. And at that point, I didn't really, I didn't really believe God. I, I grew up Catholic. I, I grew up in the church, if you will. Um, but my life did not resemble any of what I was being taught. And so there are a lot of questions there. And the decisions that I had made in my life led me to this very, very low place. And so as I'm having this conversation with God on the last day, I'm giving a, I'm giving him a heads up, so to speak Mm. on what's about to happen as if he did, he wasn't aware. (laughs) Um, and I get to the place after I've, you know, released everything that I had been carrying up until that point, I asked two questions. I said, you know, basically I would continue to endure this life as it is. If I knew two things, one that you are real. And two, that I had a purpose. And in that moment of asking, um, in that moment of surrender, if you will, I felt the arms of God wrap himself around me. And and that's the only way that I can describe it. But I feel like I'm still not doing it justice in that moment. And in that moment, something in me, something in my being and my soul knew and understood that, yes, he is real. And yes, I had a purpose. So I laid there fetal position right that night and I woke up the next day and I was just like, okay, I have a purpose. And so now my, my assignment, my focus is to understand what that purpose is. And I'm only going to know that through what I call my manufacturer, right through the one who created me. And so I started that journey. So I share that to say that there was, there was nothing right at that point. I, I hit rock bottom. Like there was no hope in me. And it's been a process of healing through all of the things that led me to that place. So when you ask the question around, like, what are the barriers, right? We all have experiences in our childhoods, in our lives, right? Whether they're, you know, the big T trauma or the little T traumas. From the time we're zero to seven, we are taking in all of the stuff of our parents, of our siblings, of our friends, of society as a whole. And so there are a lot of um, impressions, if you will, of others that are made upon us. And the experiences that we have, we don't... uh, or seven or five or whatever, we don't have a way of filtering what does this mean. And so a lot of us, our beliefs, everything is shaped before, you know, we even realize it. And then we start to go through life based on what, you know, our subconscious mind had stored in the Rolodex, so to speak. And we're making decisions, we're drawing certain situations, we're, you know, uh, drawing certain friends, we're, we're finding validation in school, like all of these things that we're looking for and we're creating, they become our identities. And oftentimes we don't realize that, yes, we're 30 something or we're 40 something and, you know, we've been living life and we've created kids, but we're still operating with the mindset and the beliefs that were formed when we were five or when we were four or the messages that were told to us. And so this process of identity, um, and and I'll give another example, like, you know, I grew up in a household, I'm an immigrant, I'm a child of immigrants. And so it was, you got to work hard, you got to work hard, like nothing you do is ever good enough, right? I I had well-meaning parents, but you know, they projected 
a lot of their stuff onto me. And so for me, that formed that um, overachiever, like I'm going to be the best and it has to be an A and I have to do all the things, right? I have to get all the certifications and whatnot. I'm thinking as I'm growing up, like that's just how I am. That's just how I'm wired. Like I love to learn and da, da, da. Some of that was true, right? But mm. some of that also came from the messages of sure. no matter what you do, it's not enough. And, or like, you need to work hard. Like that's how you gain validation. That's how you gain appreciation by working hard. So here I am advancing in my career thinking that oh, I'm just a type A, I'm just ambitious. I'm just all these things where it's not until like I hit a fork in the road where that no longer served me because here I was repeatedly getting to a place of burnout. Here I was repeatedly attracting, you know, jobs and environments and situations where I felt undervalued, right? Mm -hmm. It was all of these things happening. And yes, I could isolate it and say, okay, this is the work environment or this is the manager, this is the company. But at some point you have to look, you have to look within inside yourself and say, I'm the common denominator here. Yeah. And once you get to that place, when you, once you can be honest and vulnerable with yourself, then you can start to unravel the onion and see, okay, these are the messages, right? So like you're hearing it like in, in now for me, but it took me years of repeating the same patterns professionally. I was seemingly successful, right? When you looked on the outside, but the truth is I was still the three or four or five, whatever year old girl trying to get validation, if you will, or trying to prove that I was a hard worker. And so it takes time to unravel that stuff. But when it comes to identities and barriers and whatnot, the thing that stops us from being who we truly are is because we won't, I shouldn't say we won't, we may not know or be aware of the fact that, you know what, there's a pattern at play here. Mm -hmm. And in order for me to stop this pattern or to stop experiencing this, I need to go within myself to identify where the source of that is and wow. then make a choice to either continue down that path or to say, you know what, this no longer serves me. I release this identity and I choose a different one. Yeah. Yeah. You, it, again, so many important things that you've shared there, you know, part of it is the awareness, um, making sure that you can identify what some of those patterns are. Um, and then it's, what do you want to do about it? Because every day is a new day. And so you don't have to continue <laughs> being that identity or living through those patterns. It's, it's about learning that lesson or, or discovering what is the message it's trying to tell you so that you can, you can move forward. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, thank you for sharing that. And, you know, not an easy, not an easy path to navigate, um, but certainly it sounds like you've done that with grace and you were really looking for that message to help guide you on what's coming next. And, and so, so from that, I'm assuming that's what prompted transforming you know, your book, The Journey to Becoming, it, you know, talk to us about why and, and, you know, what you hope this book is, is to accomplish in this world. Yeah, it's a really funny story. I actually wrote that book in about 10 days. Um, so wow. <laughs> yeah, I tell people that and I'm like, okay, this is not the traditional path. Um, I actually started writing a different book. At that time, I was probably about two years into my entrepreneurial journey. I had left corporate America and, you know, started my coaching and my consulting and, you know, was, was really floundering. If I'm being completely honest, that first year was just like, what, what were you doing, ma'am? Um, and so, you know, I needless to say, I had some time and some capacity and I started writing a book because what I at the time, what I wanted to write about was the transition from being in corporate to entrepreneurship. I had been in corporate for about 14 years at that point. It's all I knew. I saw myself as being the one to climb the ladder, to make it to the C-suite. So even just making the decision to step away from that was, you know, a whole like life <laughs> transforming situation. And then you get into entrepreneurship and it, for me, I call it the best self-development of 
course that you can ever take because all of my stuff came, you know, up like all of my, um, my money wounds, all of my like thoughts around, uh, unworthiness and, and all insecurities, you name it, everything came up within that first year. And I wanted to write a book to help people who were leaving corporate America or thinking about it, not necessarily on, oh, this is how you do marketing or this is how you put a product together, but this is how you maintain your sanity <laughs> in that process of transition. Outlined it in everything. And then um, one day as I was writing, I heard Holy Spirit say, you need to write the other book. And I was like, the other book? I don't, I don't have an, another book. And it was just like, yeah, you do. You have another book. So again, I had to go inside of myself, like, what's the other book? And I knew it. I knew exactly what that book was. Um, it was just my life journey up until that point. And so I went on a fast. I do these periodic uh, fasts for, you know, just spiritual cleansing, mental, emotional, whatnot. And during that fast, I started writing. And at first, the writing was going to be, again, very, very superficial, like, okay, this was life. And I was then challenged to, you know, write about some things that I hadn't even shared. Um, so I, I experienced a lot of uh, big T trauma, um, including sexual trauma or sexual abuse, emotional abuse, you name it. Um, and up until that point, I had never verbally shared it with anyone, let alone, you know, thought to put it in a book that others would read. But as I was going through the process, I completely surrendered through the, to the process and started writing. And it was literally, I would write one day a chapter or, you know, or so completely ball and like release all of it and then have to take a break and then write the next day. And so all in all, as I wrote the book, it took you from, you know, my coming into this world, right. And some of the earlier experiences that I had. Um, my story of hitting rock bottom and, and meeting God, if you will, for the very first time and how that transition um, allowed me to move through different transformations in my life. And I mirror it to the process of the caterpillar turning into the butterfly mm -hmm. um, because, <laughs> yeah, in, in so many ways. And I, I was intentional about not making the book about this, like, woe is me. These are the things that I went through in life, but to, to highlight it in a way that says, no matter who we are, no matter what our starting point, no matter what our upbringing or the things that we're facing, we are all the process of life is this process of transformation. Mm -hmm. um, the caterpillar goes into what I call the transformation chamber willingly when it goes into its cocoon, right? To turn into, it does not know that it's going to become this beautiful, majestic thing. There's just something that tugs inside of it that says it's time. Mm -hmm. And it willingly goes through this process of, you know, complete dismantling of its identity, of its DNA, only to begin to build strength in different things. And I feel in life, that's what we're doing constantly. What we don't recognize sometimes is that, or what we do, I should say, sometimes is that when we go through those challenging moments, right, be it that we've lost a job or, you know, we didn't get a promotion or a breakup or whatever life situation we have, we don't recognize that that is an invitation into the transformation chamber. And some, most of us, right, because we're humans, we like, we don't like change. And so we like to cling to the thing that we know that is familiar. But the, the premises of the book is in every one of those situations, if you choose to surrender, if you choose willingly to go into the chamber, that which you are after the process, if you will, right, you'll be so much 10 times greater, right? Like 10 times more powerful, strengthened in who you are, your ability and your capacity to make an impact, your ability and your capacity to grow, to soar, all of those pieces. So I've taken the ugliest of ugliest things that I've experienced in life and described them in a way that allows you not to, not to sugarcoat or not to, you know, demean the pain of it. Cause the pain of it is definitely described, but you know, we, we always have a choice. We can look at the pain and mm -hmm. focus our perception on, on what we given meaning to be like the ugly or the negative of life, 
or we could see it as this is the process of my growth. This is the process of my becoming. This is the process of me living out the purpose and the beauty that is my life. Oh, wow. That's so beautiful. And what courage, right? Like that takes a lot of courage to be able to step into that cocoon and, you know, even trust that you're going to come out yeah. as this beautiful butterfly. Um, and, and I think that's where a lot of people get nervous or, or they get scared, right? Because it's, you know, something needs to change. Um, but it's that fear of, well, what if it doesn't work out? So how did you find that courage, Sabine? Oh, I prayed. <laughs> I prayed every day. Literally, I, I think it, it started where I, I started praying for courage specifically is um, when it came time for me to leave corporate America. And so this was about 2018. I felt the tug and I was just like, no, I, I can't do it. I've always worked for myself. Like I live, you know, I'm, I've been pretty independent since I, I was a teenager. And so the thought of like stepping out of, you know, my safety zone of corporate America really scared me. And I remember I just kept fighting it. I just kept fighting it. One day I was walking my dog um, and I was just like, you know what, God, it would be so much easier for me to make this decision to leave corporate if I at least had clients, right? And then the voice that came back to me was just like, well, that wouldn't be faith, would it? And I was Ooh. like, you know what? <laughs> Touche. Mm. <laughs> Touche. And I was just like, you're right. It wouldn't be faith. And so from that point, I made that decision and, and that I was going to leave. But then I also, every day I prayed for courage every single day, my prayers for courage. And, and that doesn't mean that, oh, I prayed for courage and all of a sudden I felt courageous and I could no, Cause even in that praying for courage, there were days where like, I, I imagined myself like being homeless, right? Like I imagine like, okay, I'm going to do this. And then this is not going to work out. I don't have any clients. I don't know what's going to happen. And I, in my mind, I had already for, like forecasted that I would end up, you know, like homeless. And it wasn't until like I got access to a book. Um, I think it's called The Million Dollar Coach by Alan Weiss, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he, <laughs> yes. And he talks about his story of like how he was leaving corporate and whatnot and how him and his wife sat down and they looked at all of the finances that were available to them, right? Whether it be in credit cards, their mortgage and everything. And at the, at the time they realized that they had like a year or so, right? Worth of, of money resources available to them. And I was like, huh, let me do this exercise. And I did the exercise and same thing, Vicki, like if I took all of the resources that were available to me, I had a year. Right. So here in my mind, I had, you know, I convinced myself this is what's going to happen if I made this decision. But in reality, when I did the work, I was just like, huh, OK, so there was some peace. So it's like even when you ask for courage, even when you tap into courage, it doesn't necessarily mean that you get these superhuman powers and like you're not afraid. Courage is not the absence of fear, but it's the ability to move forward even with the fear still with you. Um, and so for those of you, you know, depending on uh, where you're listening, depending on what your faith is, you know, courage doesn't necessarily have to be to God or anything like that, but just tapping into that inner knowing that you're going to be okay. And then the other thing that, you know, I, I recognize through this process uh, of leaving corporate and certainly other um, leaps that I've made since then is that I know that I'm going to fall, right? You know, they say like, take the leap off the cliff. <laughs> if you can look at it from the standpoint of, okay, I'm going to take this leap and there's going to be a period of falling, right? But the fall is a soft fall. You're either going to fall and it's, you're going to land softly or you're going to fall and you start to soar. You look at the birds, right? That get like pushed off the cliff by their mamas, right? Like they either, you know, they either move forward and start fly? to flap their wings. Yeah. And fly. Um, but for us, I think whenever there's an inner tugging mm -hmm. that says it's time for you to move forward with something, you have to first instill that trust in yourself, right? That that tugging would not be present if whatever you're being pulled or called into doing is not possible. Right. So whatever you need to, whatever you need to hold on to, whether it's, you know what, I'm going to jump and I'm going to land softly 
I'm going to jump and I'm going to soar, or I'm going to learn to soar in the process. That has to be the mindset and that has to be the faith. And that's what the, the prayer for courage or that trusting in courage will allow you to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's so important. And, and, you know, when you were just saying that, one of the things I was thinking is that that tug will continue to happen until you take some action. And, and sometimes it will take action on its own and not always in the way that you think it might happen. Right. Um, and so again, even though it might be difficult, it's trusting that you have what it takes to navigate that. Absolutely. That you have the skills, you have the abilities, whatever that is to help you be able to navigate that to move forward. And it may actually be the best thing that ever happens in your life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And we were just talking about this uh, in the green room, right? It was just like, it, we think that these instances that happen in our lives or these decisions that we make or moves that we make, like they're, you know, that they're by themselves or standalones. But mm -hmm. in reality, it's like the thread, right, that takes you down the path. And I, I truly believe that nothing that comes into our awareness is by accident. It's not by coincidence. The people that come into our lives, the conversations that we have, like you pass by a book and are inspired in that moment. I think that the challenges, and I know you you speak a lot on, on conscious leadership, right? It's really just more so a conscious society of what's happening in the now, what's happening in the moment. So many of us are either like living in the past or we're living in the future, right? So you're either in this place of fear, resentment and anger or whatever, or you're in this place of like anxiety and worry of what's to happen. But when you can take a moment and be in the now, like this is what's happening right now. This is what is true for me right now. And you can release past and present or past and future, I should say then it allows you to look at opportunities and see things and gain that inner peace and gain that moment of awareness that, you know what, it's going to be okay. I don't know. I don't need to focus on the future and I don't need to worry about the past because none of them exist in this moment. And yeah. that's when we can really walk in consciousness and intentionality on what we're creating in our lives and what we're creating in our businesses or what we're creating in our careers for others. Yeah. So true. So true. Yeah. And even as, as, as you were just saying that, Sabine, I was thinking about like how many of us live on autopilot, right? Yes. Like, you know, you think about like if you drive into work as an example, or if you commute on the train or what or the subway or whatever, you know, how many times do you get to the destination to the end and you go, how did I get here? Right. And, and that's what we're talking about, right? opening that space up so that you are aware of where you're going, what you're doing right now, because right now is all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> right? There is no guarantee for, for future. It's about what's happening right now. And you have that choice to your point, even the example you shared of, you know, when you hit rock bottom, you had a choice at that moment in life to either give up and not carry forward or to listen and tune into that calling that you had to, you know, pick yourself up, Sabine, yeah. you have things to do, you have work to do. <laughs> yeah. And, and so paying attention to that is super important. And that comes in all different shapes, sizes, forms, gifts, like we all have them and they all come differently, but paying attention and listening to that is so important. Absolutely. Absolutely. On the subconscious front, I, I had a coach who, you know, really brought it to life. And he was just like, think about when you're getting in the car, right? You don't think outside of obviously finding whatever, whatever car key is, you don't ask yourself, oh, wait, where, where is the door? Like, okay, wait, how do I put my seatbelt on? Like, you're not, when you get inside of a car, you're not trying to figure out wh well, where's the gear, where's the ignition? Like, you're just, you're going in and you're doing it. Why? Because so much of your life, you've either seen it patterned when you were a child and you were being ridden around or you've been doing it for so long that like your subconscious mind just knows how to do it, right? And so, so often, especially uh, when it comes to leadership, all right, like there are so many leaders who are like on this autopilot of this is how I function, this is how I function in life. And that's why when, when we're challenged with something that like shifts that, 
we're kind of like, whoa, wait, mm, <laughs> what this, happened? This is so the right world. Right. <laughs> well, what do I do here? And so, if we could imagine the power of our subconscious mind to de- to you know figure out what the pattern is to get in the car to drive it from one destination to to the other, or to get to work and know you know how to fill out that Excel spreadsheet or how to do whatever it is that we need to do. Think about how much power we really truly have where we can say, okay, this is a goal that I want to set for myself. And these are the actions, right? That you are living in the moment and taking steps to move you forward in something. Like we, we, we've created the ability to drive a car. We've created the ability to do all these things. If you're in a space where you're kind of like, I want to do something different. And this is what I hear from women a lot. I want to do something different. I want to grow. I want to evolve, but I feel stuck. Mm -hmm. And part of that, (laughs) yes. And part of that stuckness is not really stuckness. It's just, you have a pattern that you are familiar with. And now the question is, what pattern do you want to create? Right. And so feeling stuck is really debilitating, but if you can look at it as, huh, I've created this, I can create something new and start taking steps. Then it's much more empowering. And I I feel like the word empowering doesn't even do it justice, but it puts you in the driver's seat, literally consciously of creating what it is that you do want. Yeah. You get to choose. Yes. And, And that's such an important aspect of how we live our life. We do get to choose, right? If you just slow it down, and, and take those necessary steps or have that awareness of how to choose what's going to serve you. And you have that opportunity every single day. You can choose to get up out of bed and decide I'm going to spend 20 minutes doing yoga, or I'm going to jump right in the shower, get dressed and go, right? Like everything we do is about choice. And, and so to your point with leadership, you get to make that decision. How do you want to show up in the world? Yeah. What impact do you want to have? Yeah. So Sabine, out of curiosity, because I'm, I'm just looking at our time here, out of curiosity, what are you reading right now? Oh, so two books, actually. Um, Conversations with God uh, by Neil Donald Walsh. Um, so it's a three book trilogy. Uh, it's long. <laughs> so I'm actually listening to it on Audible. And then another book by uh, Gabrielle Bernstein, Uh, Mm -hmm. you are the guru. Mm -hmm. Um, And so those are on my personal self-help books. Um, I actually just this weekend finished uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So I balance between, you know, (laughs) personal development and then like business, you know, mindset stuff. Um, The Conversations with God, as as I was sharing with you before, it's, it's a book that I feel like I've heard of it, like in this space at some point. Um, but uh, you know, there's the saying that when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Mm -hmm. And I think it's appeared in my life at the time that, you know, I'm in today as as I've been on this journey. And so, uh, not to, to give it away, but basically conversations with God is, is Neil getting to a place where he was just frustrated with life. Like nothing was going right with his life. And he was absolutely angry, similar to me where I was 16 years ago. And, you know, he got to a place where he was just like, you know what, I'm just so angry. I don't even know if God really exists, but I'm just going to start writing what I'm feeling. And so he starts to write, you know, all the things that aren't going right in his life and then has this moment where he hears God say, okay, well, are you just venting or do you want answers? Mm. And that is the start of the conversation where, you know, everything that he wants to know, he starts asking and God starts responding. Um, and so for people, you know, you can, depending on what your faith is or whatever, you can look at it as God, universe, source, whatever the case may be. Um, but it's really this, um, this opening of what is true, um, or, or from his perspective, I'll say from his perspective, right. Cause we all get information and it's filtered based on what we, what we know or how Our we realities. understand. Yeah. yeah. And so it's, it's a, it's a dialogue that allows him to move past the situations and the circumstances that he's going through to help him see a greater purpose and a greater understanding and a greater awareness. And the reason why I say it's, it's, it's important for me in this time of my life, because I feel another tug or I've felt another tug of transitioning and moving into a space where, 
you know, I take not only just what I know from like corporate and helping leaders advance and, you know, helping people from a competency standpoint, a tactical standpoint, but really going into deeper to helping people answer that question. Yeah. Who am I? Helping people tap into their inner well of courage, helping leaders in particular, just because of where our society is today, helping them, you know, move away from the doing to learning how to be. And I think that, you know, as we look at every sector in our society, from government to schools, to the homes, to corporations, you know, people are hurting. And we saw that we, we saw it on a grand scale, or we've been seeing it since the, the pandemic, but people are hurting and people are walking around, they're doing, they're effective in their doing, but they're not whole, they're not happy. Um, and I, I know happiness is objective, but I mean, happy in terms of who you are created to be, you are at peace with that and you are exemplifying that. And I feel like I'm in a space right now where I'm transitioning into helping those who want it those who feel that inner call, those who have that deep crying out of, I want to be who I was created to be. I feel me being led to support those individuals. So having Mm -hmm. this book be reflected back to me and hearing has just been, it's just been amazing. That's amazing. What a great journey. And, and, you know, journey being, it it continues to evolve, right? Um, which you've just, you've just expressed, which I love that. And, you know, just uh, two things before we wrap up, you had shared a quote with me when we were in the green room. So I I would love for you to share that with our audience, because I think that that's such a powerful message in perspective. Yes, absolutely. So the quote is in the absence of cold, you cannot be warm in the absence of sad, you cannot be happy. And the importance of that, or my takeaway from that is, you know, oftentimes we want to label the things that are unpleasant or the things that we don't want or the things that catch up, catch us off guard. We want to label them as negative and we want to get rid of them or we want to get over them or we want to get past them. And so what this passage shows you is that, you know what, you really can't have one without the other. You can't appreciate one without the other that, you know, in experiencing sad, you're also experiencing happy in experiencing cold. You're also experiencing warm. And so that is the beauty. I think that that is that that's us as human beings, that we get to experience the fullness of life. Um, And, you know, again, depending on our perspective, we can go through a challenging situation and still have peace. and still find joy and still find greatness in the power of it. Or we can go through that situation and it'd be like the worst thing and uh, most debilitating. Going back to what you say, we always have a choice. We always have a choice. We get to choose what is our perspective. And guess what? The beautiful part is if we're experiencing one side, we can always make a decision to experience (laughs) another side, right? We're talking about just, just living where we've lived in weather, right? Like, I grew up in Connecticut. I hated the cold. I hated winter. Everything in me was just like, I need to be someplace that is warm. Um, (laughs) Eventually I I ended up in San Diego, even though it hasn't been warm lately, but for the most part, it's warm, right? That's, that's a, that's a very like call it trivial example, but that's exactly what we get to do, right? We can be in an environment and a situation and make a choice, we want something different and start to plan towards what that that other side of it is. Yeah. yeah, and you have that ability. Every one of us has that ability to make different choices. Um, so even though you know we feel like we're stuck, there is that opportunity to make that shift. Yeah. So Sabine, what's one thing you'd like the audience to take away from this conversation today? Yeah, so... One of the things that you just said, you know, when we're feeling stuck, and this comes from Gabby Bernstein's book, right, is that everything that we need, and and while I appreciate mentors, I appreciate coaches, obviously I'm one, um, and I appreciate the people that we, we have as support to us, but everything that we need, the answers that we need can be found within ourselves. And, you know, two questions that, you know, I would leave with the audience to ask yourself outside of who am I, right? Um, What do I want? What do I want this journey to look like? What do I want to create in this journey? 
And then the other piece is, um, what is the greatest vision that I have of myself? Mm, Oftentimes when you think about when we're kids, right? When we're kids, we are limitless. You ask a kid what they want to be. I want to be an astronaut. I want to be da da da. They're not thinking, okay, well, that means, you know, 12 years of school and this much in student loans or anything like that. They just envision the greatest and highest thing that their minds can envision. And that's what they fixate on. And so this is an opportunity for us, no matter where you are in your life or in your career, whether you think things are good or things are great, tap into that inner child and ask yourself, what is the greatest and highest vision for myself? Because more than often, we have had that vision since we were kids, but we let bills, we let responsibility, we let all of these things that society tells us are important to get in the way and we've lost track of that. And so even if, especially if you're feeling stuck, this is a great question to ask yourself and then start to move towards that. And if you feel like, okay, well, things are okay. You can still ask yourself that and then figure out, okay, how can I take where I am today to bring me closer to that? So the, the questions are, who am I? What do I want? And what is the greatest vision that I have for myself? Love it. Oh my gosh. That's such a powerful question. I, I absolutely love that. And, you know, when, when you can reflect on what that looks like and then how much of an in alignment are you to that, yes. that will really help you, you know, start to take the next steps to get you to where you want to be. Yeah. 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 Beautiful, Sabine. You are such a bright light and beautiful soul. Thank you Thank so you. much for sharing. I know it's not always easy to share some of the, the hard times, but those hard times are so important, you know, for you, but also for our audience to realize that you're not alone. Like we, we all have different things that we go through, but it is a choice as to how we decide to either surrender and, and give in to that or how, you know, how we start to take those next steps. And so thank you so much for sharing your, you know, your, your beauty and your light with us today. I am in just incredibly grateful. Oh. <laughs> That's the best way I know how to say it. <laughs> thank you. It's been a pleasure. And, and, and thank you for creating this platform. Cause I, I really do believe that, you know, we learn through our own lessons, but then we learn yeah. through others. You know, I, I think about the, the times that I've been most inspired is when I can hear, you know, we, especially in this world that we live in, there are so many highlight reels, right? Like we get on LinkedIn, we get on Instagram, we're seeing everyone's highlight reels. Um, But the truth is that life is valleys and mountains. And, you know, it's in those valley moments that we are shaped. It's in those valley moments that we find our wings, if you will. Um, And so thank you for creating this platform that allows us to share those, you know, mountaintop moments, but also the truth of the valley, because for someone who is in the valley, that mountain may seem, you know, insurmountable at this point, but to know that someone climbed from the valley up to the mountain, I think that that's what transforms and that's what inspires and that's what gives people the, the gumption to say, you know what, I, I will get through this and I can move forward. So, so thank you for the work that you do. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. It was like, and I love that analogy you just used. I mean, I think that's so important really to recognize, you know, what are the valleys and then, and making sure you're celebrating the mountaintop, right? Because we forget sometimes to do that. And, and that is such an important part of, you know, pushing through or, or even, recognizing and being aware of what you have accomplished. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So Sabine, thank you so very much. Um, This was terrific. And I want to thank our audience for joining us today. You know, as I said, we know you have a choice as to what podcast you listen to, and we're grateful that you choose Women in Leadership Talk. And, uh, you know, please share our podcast with a friend. And especially if, if, you know, you're hearing one of our podcasts Um, and you feel like, wow, this would really resonate with so-and-so, make sure you share that with them because that's the point of us doing this as as Sabine was just saying is to, you know, inspire and, and show people that there is another way, or, you know, just to help you take a step back and and reflect on how you're living your life. Um, So we're grateful for you for that. And if you're interested in your own leadership and how you're showing up in the world, please go onto our website at Will Empowered, that's one L. And you can take our free leadership quiz and that'll give you some insight as to how you're showing up in the world 
and you know how we might be able to support you if, if you're looking for that support. And one last thing, Sabine, I just thought about this. Where can they find your book? We didn't talk about that. <laughs> yeah. So the book is on, uh, on Amazon. So you can look for Transform the Journey to Becoming or just look for my, my name. Um, it's also on my website at sabinegideon.com. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that. And I'm sorry I didn't do that earlier. Okay. So thank you. And thank you, our audience. We look forward to seeing you at the next We'll Talk podcast and hope everyone has a wonderful day and we will see you very soon. Take care.